Welcome to Victory Christian Center. You're about to hear from guest minister Terry Walker as he brings us a message on Sunday service. Thank you, Vanessa. Thank you, well, Pastor Vanessa, for inviting me. And um, uh, she asked me, Pastor Vanessa asked me to share about uh, prosperity. And I want to share about what's happened with, with my life. Now, um, um, I'm, I do a lot with the outlaw bikers and uh, here and in Australia, especially in Australia. I hope you don't mind me wearing my hat, but it just stops those lights there. <laughs> is, is it not too bright for the... Is that all right? <laughs> but um, so what happened, uh, yeah, so God blessed me for many, many years. 35 years I've been doing it now. I mean, it's just amazing some of the things that I've seen God do during that time. Open many, many doors for us. Um, what I want to do this morning is to give you some keys, what I call keys. When I, when I went into the outlaw field, you have to have like a key to get into the biker, the real bad bikers like, you know, Comancheros and um, Banditos and Hells Angels and all those. You have to really ride the right bike and it's a Harley. Um, now, if all, those, if all those outlaws rode Suzukis, we would have had a Suzuki. But however, we ride the Harley. Now, what I'm saying that for, it's a key. You follow what I mean? It's a key for us to get into those places. It doesn't open the doors, but it's a big key. It helps us get in there. And uh, then we we're able to talk to them about the Lord uh, over the years. And it's been amazing. So what I want to talk to you this morning is about prosperity, about the wealth of the wicked being given to us, being transferred to us but there is keys and what I'm what I want to do is give you these keys they're keys that will open doors for you to be very very blessed with the Webster's uh, Noel Webster was um, a born-again Christian and he wrote the Webster's dictionary and uh, prosperity his uh, meaning of it was uh, the condition of being successful uh, or thriving and um, you know when I first became a Christian um, I, I got on. I got to let you know one thing today that I'm very, very blessed today. Um, you know, I live by faith, like everyone, all the other preachers do too. But I'm very blessed. I don't have to have to um, bank anything to do with banks. Like in other words, um, you know, I've got no mortgages. Um, I have no. I don't owe money on any cards. I do have. Uh, you know, obviously credit cards, but what I'll do with them is use them if I'm getting a flight somewhere and then I'll just pay them straight back. I don't, I don't owe them anything like that, if you can follow that. And I've been very blessed with five children and I've been very blessed. God's blessed me. And the, the, look, I'm not up here boasting. What I'm up here to tell you is like, I've been blessed by these keys and I want to hopefully get you to hopefully write them down or get the tape and start using these keys. They're, they're just the Word of God, but they really done a lot to me to help me to be successful in, in what I did. When I, so anyway, and I've got, like I was just saying, I've got five kids, and on two of those older kids, I've been able to give them good deposits to buy a house, and, um, you know, blessed uh, the other three too uh, very, very much. They're all in line to get deposits for houses and stuff like that as they go along. And... Um, you know, God's just blessed me so much. Like I said, I'm not up here to boast. What I'm up here for is to hopefully give you keys. These keys are the scriptures of God. Now, what happened, uh, Pastor was just sharing, yeah, I did um, quite a bit of prison in my younger day and I was three years on the run at one stage. I'd escaped and took off and became one of the state's most wanted, actually, and uh, not the third, I was it, you know. So <laughs> yeah, so... Um, they looked, uh, they were, you know, searching out for me for three years. In that three years, I, know, I don't want to go right through my testimony, it's too long, but in that three years, one and a half years into it, I, I got a big touch from God at the start of the three years and I took off. And then one and a half years later, I walked into a church and gave my heart to properly to Jesus. I didn't understand it that much. But um, then a year and a half later, the Lord spoke to me about giving myself up to the Melbourne police. And of course, they come and extradited me put me back into prison. I pleaded guilty to everything that they had me uh, for. 
I even went and told them all the, started telling them all the arm hold ups I'd done, and they said, Stop, we don't want to know anymore. We've got enough on you now. So, so that was really good. Otherwise, I probably would have spent another 10 years in there. Anyway, um, I went into court, of course, pleaded guilty, and God, they, they had to send me back to prison. Now, I went back into prison and I got out of it. God blessed. It was a supernatural move of God, and I got out. And God showed me, go back into, when I get out, I want you to start a little business. And I said, well, what's that would be? And, you know, I'm just an old thief, Lord. And the Lord showed me, he said, well, what were you good at? And I said, I was good at breaking into homes. <laughs> he said, well, I want you to start a business. And he really did. He, he gave me visions and everything of, and called it Heaven Sent Security Doors. And um, this actually all happened. So I was doing the prison ministry as well, which I did for 12 years after I got out of jail. But to start off, we started, you know, my little um, business, Heaven Sent. Now, I had nothing. When I got out of prison, I had nothing. Now, one thing I'd learned when I went to, uh, I got saved in Garden City Christian Church, like well before this, but one thing I'd learned in Garden City was um, about tithing. So obviously... I was a tither, and, and I stress this. If you go to this church and you belong to this church, make sure you tithe. I mean, I'm just saying you don't have to, but it just, it's a thing that will open doors for you. And Malachi chapter 3, verse 8 says, Will a man rob God yet rob me? And how say rob me in tithes and offerings? And then that's Old Testament. But New Testament in Luke chapter 11, verse 42, Jesus himself talked to the Pharisees and said, Tithing you ought to have been doing. However, you need to put a bit of love with it. So obviously, it's New and Old Testament. <clears throat> and, um, and so I, I just started, I was doing that, just tithing them 10%, doing what you normally do. And I'd started this little business. Now, when I say started it, I had absolutely nothing. No money, no nothing. And um, slowly but surely, I'd be, I'd be getting up every morning and praying, Lord, you know, Psalm 32, verse 8, help me, show me, what do I do next, you know? And then slowly but surely, God would put little tiny things together. There was a man named Ronnie Liverland who said, look, uh, he, I, he, he had trucks. And I said, I'll drive one of your trucks if you can give me a little tiny spot in your workshop. And he said, yeah. And I went down the road and I found an old, um, you know, I started putting things together. And then my uncle, who was alive at the time, turned around and said to me, I've got a little welder here, you can have it. And So, you know, slowly but surely, little things came together. And I was tithing. Now, I want to say this to you that, um, <clears throat> by the way, heaven sent security doors. Everything God has got me to start is still going today. Heaven sent security doors. It's got over 200 people working in it today. It's now called Barrier. They changed the name. Barrier Security. But it's massive. It's huge over in Australia and um, in a place called Waco. So, you know, like God bless you. But at the time... I'm trying to work my way through it and understand God's word. And I didn't want to, at the time, I didn't want to, I just said to Sue, I'm not going on no unemployment. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to believe God, you know, and it was a struggle. Um, but, you know, I thought that God would just open the doors for me and there'd be plenty of work. And, you know, I could honestly go into people and say, they, they'd say I'd tell them I was an expert and uh, say, you need to get this done, that done. And I explain it to them and they would do it. So, but, uh, you know, on the other hand too, even though it was, I was plodding along and paying my tithes and going to church on Sunday, I felt like, you ever seen a picture of one a little mouse in a, in a cage that's going around in a circle and he's chasing his tail? Well, even though I was paying all my debts, I'm a big man and being, you know, uh, paying debts and all those sort of things and paying all my things, even though I was doing all that, I was still struggling. I was... You know, it was like you're chasing your tail. And I said, Lord, there's got to be something more than this. You know, um, you're blessing me, but, you know, and thank God, you know, I've got a little tiny unit now and this and that. And so God was blessing us. But I was still struggling a bit in the ways of why can't I get ahead? Anyway, I had a friend of mine and this friend, his name was Jerry Exton. Jerry Exton was, um, he's gone to heaven now with his wife. They're both in heaven. Um, and he, he was a really, really good friend of mine. And he loved coming in the prisons with me. And um, he was a singer. And he, he was a lot older than me. But, you know, he just, every week he would come into prison with me and do whatever I wanted him to do. And, 
and we would I have church services going and stuff like that. And Jerry was always there to help. One day there on the way into the prison, I said, Jerry, I said, you know, I'm not sure what to do about my business. And I said, I don't seem to be forging ahead. And he said, oh, Terry, you've got to get on the Word. I said, I'm on the Word. I go to church every Sunday. And he said, you've got to get on the Word of faith. And I said, what do you mean the Word of faith? I said, I'm on it. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm believing God now for it. And he said, and he started to explain things to me about and show me scriptures that um, I would go to work every morning and pray. And, um, and he gave me these, you know, started off. Well, you know, first of all, he, he led me to Galatians 3, 29. The blessings of Abraham are ours to claim. And it goes on to say that, and now that you belong to Christ, you are true children of Abraham. Uh, you are his heirs and God's promise to Abraham belongs to you. So, Jerry started to show me this and he said, you know, you've got to understand, Terry, that there's promises in the Bible and you've got to speak them out. You've got to call them out on a daily basis. And I said, well, what are they? So he'd sit me down and he started to show me. And one of the first things he showed me was Isaiah 62 verse 6 in the Amplified Bible. And it says on you, it says, I have set watchmen all day and all night. They, have, they shall never be silent. You who put the Lord in remembrance, take no rest and give him no rest until he establishes Jerusalem. Now, what he was saying here, what the Lord just did, this different, you can look in different um, versions of it. Basically, what it is saying is remind the Lord of his word daily. That's what he's telling us. Don't stop. Remind the Lord. You know, in the New Testament, it talks about the lady that kept going back to the judge and, and, you know, and wore the judge down. Well, I'm not saying we wear God down, but he does tell us to remind him of his own promise. There's another one there in Psalms 119, verse 49.50. And it says, uh, remember your word to your servant in which you have made me hope. We, it gives us hope when we get hold of that word and we start speaking it out. And it says, this is my comfort in my affliction that your promise gives me life. And, you know, when I started reading all this, and then I said, well, what are the actual scriptures, Jerry? And Jerry gave me a couple of scriptures. Now, there's plenty of scriptures in the Bible that you can get and claim, but these are the ones that he gave me. And one of them was obviously, we all know it, but it's Deuteronomy 8.18. You shall remember the Lord your God, for it's he who gives you the power to get wealth. Now, that wealth, you've got to understand this, it's... It's not so that Terry Walk can go out and buy 50-foot ocean beautiful boats and big Mustangs and stuff like that. It's what God wants us to do is like uh, what the Bible talks about. It um, Money is not the root of all evil. The love of money is. So if you grab that money and start holding on to it and using it for yourself, I can tell you, you'll lose it. But what God says, I'll give you the power to make wealth that he may confirm his covenant that he swore to your fathers as to this day. It's for his, it's, it's for us. We live in a world today that's pretty crazy, as you can see, it's happened overseas. It's horrible. And, and I can say that I don't believe that it's going to be a long time, hopefully in my lifetime, that Jesus comes back. And I believe it probably will be. Hopefully I'm alive. And... Um, and, and see all that takes place um, because at, at the moment, it's uh, to me, in my heart, I think everything we should be trying to do is get people saved. And, and it's like um, the rain outside is free, but it costs money to pipe it to your place. The gospel is free, but it does cost money to pipe it out there, you know. And, and I believe that, that God wants us to have that money to put back into him in different ways. Now, he still wants you to be blessed. He, he, he wants you to have a blessed life. I mean, look at Abraham. He owned his cattle and his sheep and everything was huge. And so God does want you to be blessed. There's no doubt about it. But on the other hand, too, is keep the right, um, keep your fixture right on, on at least getting people saved. Anyway, another one he gave me was Philippians 4.19. It says, My God will supply all your needs according to his riches and glory through Christ Jesus. To our, God, our, to our God and our Father be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now, I've used this many, many times. I would get up in the morning and I would 
call out these scriptures. I would speak them out and I'd thank the Lord for them on a daily basis. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for a welfare and not for evil uh, and to give you a future and a hope. So I started looking at these scriptures and, uh, and when the more you look at them, you know, it, it talks about meditating on these scriptures. And uh, the Bible says this, I think there's 23 times in the Bible in Old and New Testaments, 19 in the book of Psalms alone, talks about meditating on the Lord. You know, meditating. Meditating uh, is a word that means, you know, getting into it, looking at, thinking about it, you know, pondering over in your head and, and just um, uh, getting, that, getting that scripture into your heart. You know, if, if you can get that, that word and you've spoken it out so many times, you actually start to believe it. The Bible says death and life's in the power of our tongue. We'll eat the fruit of what we're doing. You know, what we're, if, so we're speaking wrong words or negative. I'll tell you right now, it's, you're going to be living a funny old life. Joshua chapter 1, verse 8, the book of this law. I shall not depart from your mouth. You shall meditate it uh, day and night so that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it. For then you'll make your ways prosperous and then you'll have good success. So to me, um, every single person here today, every day, because we live in this funny old world, it could be a thought that goes through your head. It could be some tiny little thing, but we all sin in some little tiny way or some of us in big ways. But the thing is, like the more you put that word in. With me, when I first got saved, I had jail in my head. And, and that went on for a long, long time. And I had to get that jail out of my head and put the word in. And the only way I could do that was, was get up in the morning and speak out these words. Speak out. And it's not just these words. There's a lot of other words. You know, Psalms 91 and everything. But these are the ones that God gave me to boost my business. And... I started realising that my business started to change and I started to see me starting to go ahead. And, um, and so it, it really, and it, it, at the time, it took probably you know, six, six months or so of speaking it out, really getting those scriptures and believing them in my heart. I still pray them to this very, very day. I don't give up on them. And um, it's just one of those things. And just, just remember about the meditation, it's, it's, it's getting it and, and pondering over it and thinking about it and, and then uh, and thanking the Lord for it. In 3 John chapter 1, verse 2, it says, I wish above all things you may prosper and be in, ha in health as your soul prospers. You know, there, a few years ago, um, the, the, the world went mad at people that were talking about prosperity. They said the prosperity uh, movement and stuff like that. But, you know, like I know that God wants us to prosper and I know that he, if we keep it down, or if you can be trusted in the small things, he'll trust you in the big things. And um, that's what's happened in my life. And uh, like there's a couple of scriptures, I, I always call this God's call, phone number. You can ring him up. It's in Jeremiah 33.3. It says, call unto me and I'll answer you. Well, that to me is, <laughs> hello, Lord. So, <laughs> you know, I mean, get before the Lord and speak to him. It's just one of those things. Jeremiah 1.12 says, I will stand over that promise. I'll stand over my word to perform it. So, you know, if I'm speaking it out, if I'm doing the right thing and keeping my heart right as much as I can, going out, doing whatever I can do to, to love the Lord, and then uh, he will come back and bless me. I believe that. I really, truly do. It's not, you know, like some people get saved and well, you, you might get someone that's, about to get saved and, and you say to them, oh, look, you know, this will just change your life and everything will be fan, fantastic forever. Well, that's not really true. You become into a spiritual warfare. And um, the Bible says that Jesus told us that we don't live by bread only, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. So it's the word of God that changes things. When you think about it, he, he spoke all this out, you know, the... The atmosphere, everything, I mean, the world's outside this world. He spoke them just by a spoken word coming out of his mouth. And he tells us early in the book, in the Bible, it says the same word, the same uh, power that came out of God's mouth is in our mouths if we believe it. But it's the part of believing. 
is where you're going to have that battle. And the only way you can overcome it is by every morning you get up and speak these things out and call them out and keep calling them out until you've done it that many times that your heart, that, that word's gone from your head to your heart. And uh, like I said before, you know, I had a lot of jail up in my head and I had to get that jail out, that, that old Terry had to come out. And, and honestly, it took, um, took me a fair while because I was pretty stupid at the time. But, um, you know, I really do believe that God's uh, source of wealth is, uh, is the giver of wealth. He, the Bible says that, uh, the controller of wealth and the owner of wealth. God states, he, he states this in Haggai chapter 2 verse 8, that he owns the cattle on Thousand Hills. He owns it and he owns the gold, he owns the silver. Now, to get it to you and I, and, and that's what I mean again, is that we've got to be trusted in the small things. So if you're not trusted in the small things, it's, it's going to be awkward for God to give you more in the bigger things. It's like we've got kids, and I love to bless my kids as much as I can. Well, God, I'm a child of God, and God loves to bless me. If my kids are doing the right thing, they're living right and they're doing it, but you want to bless them more. You still love them no matter what they do. But however... You want to bless them more. And when you see them doing the right thing, well, you, you pour your more onto them. And, um, and that's the same with us with God, that he wants to pour his love and his blessing upon us. But um, now, we are, I believe that there's uh, a lot of God-fearing people here today. And um, are you a God-fearing person? I am. I <laughs> I don't want to do the wrong thing by the Lord, but let me go through another scripture. First Kings chapter 2, verse 3, it says, Keep charge of the Lord your God. Walk in his ways and keep his statutes, his commands, his rules and his testimony, as it is written in the law of Moses, that you may prosper in all that you do and wherever you turn. Now, here's where I go and I want to tell you this story. This is incredible. These things actually happened to me. These are what I'm telling you is actually what took place. I... I ran my own church for 16 years and um, we had a, three services running. It's still running today, by the way. Rayma Family Church uh, took it over 10 years ago when I handed it over to Pastor Patsy and uh, Cabernetti and her husband, Tony. And uh, they just doing so much better than I ever was. But we had several hundred people going there on a weekly basis and... Um, now, on a Wednesday night, we had a service and, um, <laughs> and uh, I was teaching that Wednesday night that knowing the next day was a Thursday where we had to, the, the Rebels Outlaw Bikers wanted us to bring our racing, we had this racing Nitro Harley, we raced with our patch on the back and nothing else but Jesus and um, anyway... They wanted us to bring it in there and we had this 40-foot coach all done up inside. It was a beautiful looking coach, big twin stacks and chrome wheels. It was a nice looking thing. Had uh, Jesus is Lord, tribe of Judah on the side of it and um, all black. It was a really nice thing. And then had a, pulled a trailer and behind the trailer was a 20-foot trailer. The whole lot was about 65 foot long, something like that all together. And in the trailer was my nitro Harley Davidsons and all the equipment to make to do the racing. So they wanted us to go in there to do his bike show in the town on the Thursday, the, the day after I preached, on the Wednesday night. So what happens is I get everyone together and I'm talking about um, uh, that night, I'll never forget it, <laughs> Second Chronicles 2020, talking about how Jehoshaphat, you know, he had the army and he, was, uh, he, was, he lived to, I think, uh, 125, I think he lived to, he, he, I think he ruled for 25 years, something like that. Um, I mean, I might be a little bit wrong in that thing, but he was a good man. He followed his father. He, wanted to, he loved the Lord, and he was the king at the time. So he, he got them all together. They were facing a big battle. And I'm teaching everyone this, this night, on the Wednesday night. All my racing team, and they're all there. And, and uh, you know, I'm talking about Jehoshaphat, how... We, Believe in he gets them all together. Hear me, O Judah and inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God and you'll be established. Believe in his prophets and you will succeed. He said, and when they had taken a counsel with the people, he appointed those 
who were to sing to the Lord and praise him in a holy attire as they went out before the army. And the Bible says, he told them, give thanks to the Lord and for his steadfast love will endure forever. In verse 22, they did that. So he put them out the front, he put the praises out the front and, uh, you know, something that's unusual to do. But he did that, he did what the Lord showed him. And in verse 22, it says, And when they began to sing to praise and praise the Lord, it turned the enemy against itself. And they won the battle without doing anything, just because they were praising God. And so that showed me a lot. And so I realised that because um, the Bible talks about, um, it talks about not complaining. And when you go through things, and I'm, I'm up there, that night and I'm saying you know when you go through crazy stuff put your hands in the air and praise the Lord not for it but in it you know we we don't praise the Lord when disaster starts happening but we praise the Lord during it and we thank the Lord that he's got it under control and he'll help us out and uh, you know you can't complain because um, um, it's dangerous to complain 1 Corinthians 10 10 it says and don't grumble as some of them did, for that is why God sent his angel of death to destroy him. And I went, oh, I don't want to be that. So that taught me a lot about not grumbling when I'm going through crazy stuff. And I, I was, you know, my life being changed, how God was changing me from this crazy jail guy to this uh, so-called better person. Um, yeah, I, I went through a big spiritual warfare, went on for many years, and so I had to learn not to get angry or not to go mad at God when things didn't go. Now, don't get me wrong. I had at certain times failed. But what I'm saying is this is like I read those scriptures and they meant a lot to me. And so I would teach the church this. When we're going through things, how many times, how many people know that when you share something like that, sometimes the very next day something crazy happens? Well, I'll tell you what happened. I go there the next day on the Thursday and I get all my boys, I'm out the front of the church, it's a big place, we had seated like a thousand people in size, it was big, and we're out, out there and I said to John and Colleen, I said, John, go out and get the coach, uh, it's all hooked up with the trailer behind it, bring it around the front and we'll load some um, goodies in it, like food and stuff, and we'll go into town. So John walks out the back of the church and... Um, <laughs> And uh, then walked back in around the front here. No, no, uh, didn't bring the truck around. And his face looked terrible. I said, what's up, John? He said, Pastor Terry, you better come around and have a look what's going on. I said, what do you mean? He said, oh, I don't want to say, just come around and have a look. So I walk around the back and here's me coach. And we're ready to go out and, you know, praise the Lord. And we're about to do some really good stuff for the Lord. And two young boys that lived in the next door place to the back of the church, their mother, I'm talking about young, they were 13 or 14, their mother <coughs> had gone away for the weekend and left alcohol in the fridge. And they got drunk and they decided to destroy my coach. And uh, what they did, they smashed all the windows um, you know, scratch the side of it, <coughs> excuse me, but all the front windows were smashed, all the lights were smashed. And when I walked around the back, all the people that were with me the night before, all my uh, racing team that were all <laughs> with me the night before, they're all walk around, we walk around it, and then I looked at the coach and my heart went from here down to my feet. <coughs> now, were we insured? We were third party insured. I had so many different vehicles, I could not go full comprehensive for everything. So what I would do is I owned them, I'd third party them. So if we hit a Mercedes Benz, that's covered, we, we throw ours away. But it was, they were, that was the only insurance I had. It was not insured for being smashed up. So my heart dropped down there. This all happened in seconds. And all of a sudden in my head, I thought, they're all looking at me. The whole lot. And I've just preached this the night before. And they're looking at me like this. And I went, well, I'm either inside me, I thought I'm either going to be a hypocrite or I'm going to lift my hands and praise the Lord. 
<laughs> Sometimes you go through some hard stuff. I, I, my hands were so heavy. I, 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 you know, all I could think of is I can't be a hypocrite. I can't do this. I've got to show these people that I'm teaching that, you know, I'm going through it too. And, you know, you're going to go through stuff like this. I lifted my hands and I went, Lord, I don't praise you for it. I praise you in it. You're a good God. And my arms got a little bit easier and I felt a little bit more relaxed and started just worshipping the Lord. And, and uh, anyway, what happened was the news people found out about it and they came out and took some photos of it and they put it on the front page of the local paper. Now, we had already got... And this happened over the next couple of days. So we'd already gone out and got, um, uh, what do you call it, um, what you, um, like a quote for the, to get it fixed. And it was $7,000. Now what happened then was um, it went out in the paper. And I'm sitting in my office, I'm thinking, oh boy, seven grand, I haven't got seven grand to pay for that. You know, I can't just take that out of the church. I can't do that. I've got to try and work that out somehow or other. And I'm just sitting there, just pondering over it, looking at the picture of what was on the front page of the paper, and all of a sudden I get a phone call. And it was a man named Bruce Keenan. Now, Bruce Keenan uh, was uh, a man that invented the retractable needle that stopped a lot of AIDS. And um, he had invented this thing. He, he was not a, nothing to do with medical. He just had this idea and he did it and... He, 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 um, he done real well out of it. Well, Bruce Keenan rang me up and he said, Pastor Terry, I'm, I love racing cars. You race bikes for the Lord. I race cars for the Lord. He said, I want to come down and help you. And I said, oh, thank you so much, Bruce. And um, he said to me, um, me and my wife uh, will be down. Her name's Vanessa too. We will be down there this afternoon and we're going to give you a check for seven grand. I went, Praise the Lord. Thank you. Now, that's not the end of the story. So he does come down, sits in my office, and he gives me a check for seven grand. I was so grateful. I mean, to me, I thought, thank God I lifted my hands and praised the Lord. <laughs> then he said to me, he said, but there's other things I want to do for you. And I said, all right. And he said, come down to my office, which was about 10 minutes from our place, the next day. And I've got something there for you. So I go down there the next day and there was a couple of men there with suits on. And I thought, well, they look like police. What's going on? But you know, I thought they were cops, you know. But anyway, they weren't. They were businessmen. And he said, sit down, Tez. We've got something to give you. And he sits me down. Now, I want to tell you this. He, he signed over at the first part was 70,000 shares of his company. Gave them to me. That... They were all worth about $4.50 each. I had to hold on for 24 hours and sell them. Now, but he said, that's just the start. I promise you, that man, we're still friends today. I still talk to him. We're still, still involved with each other. That man signed over to me, over a period of time, $420,000. And bless my church so much. And I often thought, I wonder if I had gone mad at God that day, would have that happened? And I'll guarantee you that wouldn't have taken place. Would have God still helped me? Yes, he would in other little ways. But the, if you want God's best at something, you're going to go through some sort of test of something, which can become a testimony. And, and that's what happened to me. And um, we're still, like I said, really, really good friends today. And... Uh, I mean, I could tell you so many stories, but I've never stopped claiming those promises. Um, they're just a few. I can't go right through them all because I, it's just for time. But those ones I gave you, if you'll get them home and you'll get up every morning and speak them out, uh, I promise you it will start to change things in your life. Like, you know, if you, you, know, you want to pay off your house and things like that, you want to be debt free. You're going to, God's given me a word out of Second Corinthians that says, For God is able to make all grace and every earthly blessing come to you in abundance, so that you'll always and under all circumstances be self-sufficient, possessing enough to require no aid or support, furnished in abundance for every good work and charitable donation. I can do that today. God's blessed me so much that we do a lot of help over in Israel and Uganda 
and um, you know, there's other things I'm doing right now mixed up with and just trying to help people. And God, you know what? If God can trust you in the little, he'll give you a lot. He'll bring it on to you. Um, now, uh, I haven't got all the time, so what I'm going to do now is just like to, uh, one of my older calls that I try and do. Just to, I'll pray for people afterwards. If you want me to um, mix my faith with yours, um, I'll, I'll first I'll do an older call and then I'll hand it back to Pastor Stefan and then, and then he'll get me out the front and we'll come and pray for you. But let me just say this for an older call, you know, uh, I've heard this so many times and I go around because of my life, you know, you hear people, I, I, I speak to everybody and um, one of those people I was speaking to was a 96-year-old lady and she was a lovely person and I talked to her about the Lord. She did not know the Lord and didn't want to know the Lord. And she told me, she said, I'm, you know, good people go to heaven and bad people go to hell. And uh, when I, yeah, I said, well, I don't think that's exactly true. And I explained to her about my life, you know, and how I was a bad person and thank God for Jesus. But, you know, uh, I, I, I just kept talking. I gave her Romans chapter 3, verse 20, uh, 23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of the Lord. That means everyone. It don't matter. And I started talking to her and said, you know, tell me if uh, you say you're a good person. Have you ever been in, I mean, you're 96, you're a lovely person. Have you ever been in trouble with the Lord? No. I said, um, you ever been successful in some sort of business or doing, you know, through your life, family? She said, yes, I've been successful in my family and everything. I said, have you ever hurt or robbed anyone and even a pencil from work or anything like that? And she started her eyes started to change a bit. And then I said, um, you know, she said, well, I give to the poor. And I said, look, the Bible tells us that you can't get to heaven by giving to the poor. Uh, you, can, you can be blessed by giving to the poor after you get saved. But, you know, oh, even being saved, you can still be uh, not saved. I'm sorry, you can still be blessed. But you can't get to heaven by doing that. And... Um, I said, if that was the case, I explained to that lady that if it was the case that only good people go to heaven, I said, what? and only the rich and the famous would get into heaven. And so, you know, I said, well, have you ever told a little white lie? And she sort of put her head down. And uh, I just said, I tried to explain to her, have you ever held unforgiveness on someone? Have you ever done that? Have you ever, uh, ever stolen some tiny little thing, like I said before, or... Use bad language and uh, any of these, any of these things. And, you, and I see with your, with your eyes, you, you know, you've sort of agreeing with me. You might have done those things. Well, I said, any of them, you're guilty. The Bible says. We, we're all, everybody, the word it says, it tells us plain and straight that for all have sinned and come short of the glory of the Lord. So if you're here today and death and life's in the power of the tongue, Proverbs 18, 21. It's very, very important to speak it out, uh, to invite Jesus into your heart. Um, and like I said before, you know, you don't have to be a bad guy like I was to wake up to yourself or God woke me up to myself to change. Um, and I believe in my heart that God wants to bless this church financially like never before. I truly do. And it'll come from you and I when we do our little part of it. And one of those parts is, is claiming that word, not letting it go, holding on to that promise until you get it from your head to your heart. And when it gets into your heart, I, I can tell you honestly, it's, it's an everyday occurrence to me. I every single day get up and I go through my prayers and I've got quite a, you know, quite a bit on them and a lot of them. And um, and uh, they're in my heart. I don't even have to read them out of the Bible now because I've said them so many times that it's become into my heart. And that's where you get that word from your head to your heart. That's where it all starts to change things. It really, really does. But you've got to start somewhere. And if you start doing that, the Bible says the wealth of the wicked is stored up for those that help the poor. And I believe in my heart that that wealth transfer is taken place, but it's it's not a plain, simple. Oh, just because I'm a Christian, it's going to happen. No, you, we have to work on things. There is God, and then there's us. 
It's a two-fold thing. We, you know, we, God can do anything. He, he's, he's almighty. But he wants us to be a part, in partnership with him, to believe with him, to, be, um, to work on so, so that he can bless us. And that's what he wants to do. And um, anyway, I'm going to say that prayer right now. And if anyone's here that has never said that prayer, it's very, very important to do that. Thinking of those things I just said, you know, you might be a really good person and never done a thing wrong, but you have in one way. The Bible says, for all have sinned. Would you all just bow your heads, please? And let's just pray this prayer. I'll just say this, Jesus, I come to you, Lord, and I ask you, Jesus, would you please forgive me? Come into my heart. Come into my life. Right now, in Jesus' name, I pray. Well, yeah. Thanks for watching Victory Christian Center. For more content, please subscribe to our YouTube channel or you can subscribe to our podcasts on Spotify, iTunes or Google Podcasts. Check out our website at victory.net.nz. We'll see you again soon.